Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. We got this fight on Netflix. It's going to be streamed to what, like 700 million homes, something crazy like that. I, I think a lot of people are going to watch this. Justin, before we jump into what happened over the weekend and, and some clips I want to discuss with you, where where are you right now on this fight? Do you still feel pretty much the same? Has anything changed since we last spoke about it on Friday? Unfortunately not, man. I came out with a little short video talking about Tyson and Jake Paul. I'm not really excited about the fight, man. I hate Mike to go in there and lose, uh, you know, and then, you know, to give Jake all this credit. Oh, I beat a legend. And, you know, if you guys watch like the Netflix, you know, interview Jake talks about, he's like, this is a win-win situation for me. And I disagree with him, but his claim is he's either I go in there and I knock out one of the baddest men on the planet or I lose to the baddest man on the planet. And that's not a big deal. And it's like, I see what he's saying, but he's 30 years the elder. He hasn't been training over the last 10, 15, 20 years. You know, he trained for he had an exhibition bout against Sugar Ray, who is a, a really small fighter. Unfortunately, I think Jake has age. Jake has, you know, heart. Uh, Jake has strength. Jake has size. Uh, Mike Tyson, unfortunately, he has uh, he uh, what's he has the idea of, you know, that he was once the baddest man on the planet, man. And, you know, and Mike said something during his interview, too, that I really appreciated. And and I tried to, in the video, I tried to explain it, but I couldn't think of the right words. And Mike hit it straight on the head. You know, I think I talked about Mike being a, a real killer compared to Jake Paul has is, is, is the idea of a killer. And, yep. and Mike Tyson, it's crazy because I tried to talk about it in the video. I just couldn't put together exactly how to put it, but Mike put it perfect. Jake Paul is a manufactured yeah. killer. Yeah. And Mike Tyson is a natural born killer. Mike Tyson has had to fight for everything. Jake is, you know, he's a YouTube guy, man. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. You know, I've really, Jake has grown on me over the, I hated Jake Paul when he first came on the scene. All MMA fighters did. But, you know, he's really grown on me. I've, he's grown, I've, I've earned a lot. He's earned a lot of respect for me and the MMA community. But he's a manufactured killer, guys. Mike Tyson wasn't on YouTube or Nickelodeon, you know, being a, being a, 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 a kid growing up. Mike Tyson was getting picked on, bullied in the street, getting in street fights. Guys, you know, are surrounded by drugs, surrounded by just crazy shit. You know, he, he had to fight his, his way through everything. And when I say fight, I don't mean persevere. I mean physically fight. Have you ever heard the story about the bully that came to Mike's house when he was young and killed one of his birds? And he got yep. like, that was a fucking fist fight. They got in a fist fight. Jake Paul has been doing pranks on people. And, oh, you know, and, and again, he's an incredible athlete. He's an incredible boxer, but he's not, he wasn't born. He wasn't put through the trials and tribulations. Mike Tyson has been put through throughout his whole life. Mike Tyson nailed it on the head. Jake Paul is a manufactured killer. Uh, Mike Tyson is a natural born killer and there's a big difference. And I really hope to see that in, in the fight. With that being said, Jake Paul also says in an interview to Mike, not on a video, but to Mike's face that he, in the first round, he will meet him in the center of the ring. And if, and if Jake Paul has the guts to do that on a fresh Mike Tyson, because I don't think Mike is going to have the gas tank to go eight rounds or 10 rounds, however long it is. I think he's going to have one or two good rounds in him. And if he lands that the, that old Tyson uppercut, uppercut, you know, body head, I mean, it could be a short night for Mike. And even, honestly, if Mike goes in there and hurts Jake Paul in the first round or the second round, I'm considering it a win. Well, wait, so this almost sounds like the way you just positioned everything, that you're feeling like Mike's going to win or you're giving Mike a much – I feel like this is a uh, – you're giving Mike a better chance than you did, like, let's say a few weeks ago or a couple months ago. Well, yeah, because, you know, I see how – look how long Jake Paul's wingspan is. Mike is really short. You know, and he gets guys up against the corner, up against the ropes, and he unleashes hell on him when he's on the inside. But if Jake was smart and he just wanted to come and, and, and win this fight from a strategic standpoint, he just has to keep Mike at the end of his jab and run away from him for three or four rounds. Then, unfortunately, Mike is going to slow down. Mike's punches aren't going to be as hard. I'm, I don't – I give Mike a better chance if Jake is a man and stays by his word and meets him in the center of the ring in the first round. That's Fair Mike's enough. chance. That's where Mike has to land his knockout devastating shots because in the eighth round, unfortunately, Mike is juiced up. There's no doubt. Look how much mass he has when you're on testosterone, when you're on, you know, you, and he has incredible doctors, but you know that your red blood cell count goes up, your weight goes up and he's 58 years old. He just had a heart condition. That's why he had to pull out of his last fight. How is his heart and his lungs going to hold up for eight rounds with a young, fresh Jake Paul in his face for eight rounds? I just don't see it happening at 58 years old. Now, what about if, if, if he's on, you know, supplements or... Both or, of these guys are juicing yeah. the gills. Look at him. 
So what about what about EPO in terms of Mike's taking EPO? How can that impact his cardio and his heart and lungs and all that stuff? I mean, it it definitely can. But again, we're talking about a 58 year old heart that has been through drug abuse, that has been through boxing already, that has been through this and that. Now imagine he hasn't done anything to this extent in in, in 20 years. I mean, I, I don't count his his boxing match with Sugar Ray because they had a weird rule set. You couldn't knock each other out, and you know they got in there and pitter pattered. Mike actually looked good. His cardio held up. Hey, he held up. You know, mm-hmm. for for as long as he needed to, to get to get by the win. And even afterwards, when he's in his post fight interview, he's not <sighs> like he was. He was good. He's like, fuck, I could have went more rounds. But again, the output was different. The intensity was different. You know, even with EPO, I think it might help him a little bit. But again, he has a 58 year old heart. He's he's I mean, dude, Mike talks about going crazy, doing cocaine, you know, the night before his fights like that all weighs on you through years and years and years. And you might not see it right away. But now at 58 years old, even if he has changed his lifestyle and he's healthy now, you know, you do, it's like driving a car. If I get a brand new car and I'm hitting that rev limiter and I'm going 120 miles an hour for the first 200,000 miles, and then at 200,000 miles, I'm like, hey, I'm just going to baby this car for the next 100,000. The damage was already done in those first 200,000 miles that I was pressing the rev limiter, that I was pressing this car to the max. And I feel and I'm worried that Mike Tyson did that early in his life, and it's going to show here next weekend. And I'm telling you guys, I want Mike Tyson to win. And everyone's going to go, oh, you hate Mike Tyson. Oh, that. Shut the fuck like and that's the thing with fighting fans like just because I think Jake Paul is going to win doesn't mean I don't want Mike to win. I want Mike to win. I want Mike to go in there and start this guy being early Christmas present guys. But I mean, let's be real. He's 58 years old with miles under the hood. You know, he had to back guys. He backed out of a fight two months ago because of his heart condition. And now all of a sudden his heart's 100 percent. And now he's going to be able to go. Okay. Stomach ulcers, stomach ulcers. Okay, stomach ulcers. Okay, well, that, that's much different, much different. But again, he's already been medically unfit to compete. And now two, three months later, all of a sudden, okay, his ulcers are gone. Mike's ready to go. You know, I, I just think this is a circus. And, you know, I it's, it's hard for me to even bet on these fights because how do we know that someone's not in Jake Paul's ear? Hey, let Mike survive you know, five rounds. Like, give him the credit. Like, don't go out there and start him in the first round because it'll take all the credit away from this victory but if he goes five six seven rounds or or wins a decision or knocks him out in the eighth like jake paul's getting a lot of credit like oh yeah box mike tyson and this and that but how do we know jake paul's not being told to carry mike tyson for uh, x amount of rounds i feel that uh what's his name floyd mayweather carried conor mcgregor i feel people like oh conor won one round three and four or whatever yeah he did but I am almost 99% sure, and I've talked to guys on the inside, that Floyd Mayweather carried Conor McGregor into the late rounds uh, just to, to, to make it a spectacle. Nobody sure. wants to go out there and watch you know, Floyd Mayweather beat the fuck out of him for a round or two and then finish the fight. Everyone's like, wow, that was very uneventful. But by letting him win, kept dumb fans that don't see what's happening – like in in 99% of people watching these sports are fucking stupid. They're like, oh, Conor McGregor beat Floyd Mayweather. Like, Shut the fuck up, dude. He's in boxing. He's the greatest boxer of all time. Conor's a great MMA striker, but he's not a boxer. Floyd Mayweather let him win and then finished him when he needed to. And even the stoppage I thought was bad. He didn't even put him down. The referee jumped in to stop. I think this is all circus show. This is all just to get viewers. You know, because again, if every time an MMA fighter went in there and got starts in the first round, guess who's not watching the fight? MMA fighters. But by giving uh, that small hope that, oh, fuck, Connor's winning this fight. It's going to, like, dude, if, if I was watching the boxing match and Connor won round one and two, who's AFA? Turn this fight on right now. Like, Connor McGregor just won the first round, the second round. Like, he's going to win this fight. And then you're going to be like, what? And then you're going to tune in. This is all, it's just a circus to get guys to watch. And, you know, that's why I don't bet on these, these, these clown fights, you know, because I just think the outcome is predetermined and, 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 and people, uh, I, I just think a lot of it's staged and I don't think it's staged by Mike. I think Mike, Mike isn't the type of guy with that being said, I know over the last years he's had financial problems. What if they're like, Hey, you know, Jake's going to carry you for the first couple rounds. We're going to give you a hundred million dollars. And, you know, whatever happens after that happens after that. I'd like to think Mike would have more integrity on himself as the baddest man on the planet not to go for it. But if someone came and gave me $100 million and like, hey, you're going to go fight this fucking bum that sucks and you got to carry him into the third round or fifth round or whatever we're doing, uh, I'm doing as my paycheck is telling me to do. Okay. Okay. Let me respond to it. You said a lot there. So I want to respond to some of this stuff. So. 
First of all, talking about the Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor fight, I actually did feel that way, that it did seem almost like when I watched it, because I watched it back a couple times, maybe Floyd was carrying him a little bit to, to draw on the show. I could also see Floyd kind of figuring him out because it was an awkward style, similar to when we had Francis Ngannou versus Tyson Fury. He didn't really know what to expect. There wasn't any tape on him boxing. So I think that might have played, played a part of it. I don't think that was an early stoppage. I think Conor was in bad shape. His card, he was gassed to the max and he looked he looked like he was almost out on his feet so i actually do think the stoppage was okay all right now let's come back to this fight now the difference between that fight and this fight in terms of in terms of floyd carrying connor there i don't think the danger level was that high for floyd so he could carry him here with jake paul it's it's a different story i think the danger level as you mentioned at the beginning is extremely high for jake so i don't think he can afford to try and carry him or do anything like that i think this is a very serious fight. And yeah, maybe Jake has these physical advantages, the youth advantage, less damage, all that stuff. But when I think does Mike have an advantage in this fight, in your opinion. Well, okay. So we're, I want to talk about that in one second. Okay, but sure. I, do, I think primarily it's his mentality. But I also do think um, his power is still is still quite intact. And so it's, it's that hit factor. That's why I think it, it can be quite dangerous for Jake to stick around so much. Because if he does get caught, he can get knocked over and knocked out potentially. But um, uh, anyway, so... I don't think that that likelihood of carrying him will exist, but I do think that Mike, had, as you mentioned, going back to that point, Jake had a response to that, right? When he was said, hey, he's manufactured killer. I'm natural born killer. Jake goes, yeah, well, all the best things in this world are manufactured, so I'm happy to be a manufactured killer. That's fine with me. But now I want to go back to a clip here. And this I felt like when I was – dude, I'm actually going to pick Mike Tyson in this fight. Now, what I wasn't saying that until this weekend, and I want to show you why. It's just a difference in mentality. Now, you notice even – and I'm not saying – Tyron, Tyron Woodley or Ben Askren. I mean, those, those are all killers too. <coughs> the difference Different in men's, what's that? Uh, the huge discrepancy in weight with those discrepancy fights. in weight, but also there's something different about their mentality. Now, if you remember, he gave in the second fight against Tyron Woodley, he gave him a sixty thousand or twenty five thousand dollar Rolex as a gift, and he was like, "Oh my god!" Like it kind of messed with him, and he took it, and then he knocked him out later. And people said. By you Wait, accepting, say that again. I'm sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm misunderstanding what you're saying. I'm, who I'm who, jumping. Uh, fast. Yeah, I'm jumping. Fast. Who, uh, uh, watch. Let me back up. So it was so Jake Paul beat Tyron Woodley. Then they had the rematch, right? When when uh, there was somebody pulled out. I think it was uh, Tyson Fury's brother or whatever. He pulled out last minute. Tyron Woodley came back, and then before that fight, Jake during the face to face, he gave T Tyron Woodley a present. He was really nice to him in that lead up. He gave him a Rolex. I think it was like a sixty thousand dollar Rolex. And Tyron was like, whoa, this is crazy, man. You're crazy. And he, but he took the Rolex. It was a nice Rolex. And then he ended up losing. So this is the type of thing that Jake Paul does, almost like the psychological warfare. Sometimes he's a, a jerk, and sometimes he actually gives gifts. He did the same thing with Mike Tyson. I want to show you this clip because this was insane. I want to show you how Mike Tyson responded to him giving a gift, to him receiving a gift or getting a gift from Jake. And to me, I was like, oh, we're dealing with like a totally different type of human being here where the psychological games are actually just like they, they have literally no effect. So let me just show you. And this is kind of why I'm starting to lean towards Mike Tyson. It's that mentality, that unbreakable, like he's just afraid of no man that I saw in this face to face, even though he's lighthearted. So check this out. On Instagram, it's actually on his page and uh, it's kind of went viral today of him just stepping in you, kissing you in the mouth. So he's talking about posting some pictures of him kissing Mike. And then he also, he gave Mike Tyson a gift. Now you'd mentioned that story of a pigeon being killed when Mike was a kid, right? He gives Mike a very expensive, like a really fancy pigeon. So watch this. And now he's, he's watch how he responds to Jake Paul trolling him online. Just watch this. Several times. Does stuff like that aggravate you? I have that effect on people. Oh. You know, I have that effect on people. <laughs> okay. Okay, so he's looking at the pigeon right now that Jake is giving it to him as a gift. I've just never seen someone uh, handle a pigeon. It, you got pigeon flies in your family, don't you? Yeah, I do. Is it a low budget pigeon? Or it, well, he had no, he had no one, no one loves him. He has no band or anything, so he doesn't belong to nobody. Okay. Well, he belongs to you now. I'm feeding to my falcon. His response, he's like, yo, he belongs to you now. He goes, I'll feed him to my Falcons. <laughs> and like literally later on in the interview, Jake's like, wait, are you really going to feed him to your, like he, he literally messed Jake up. He's like, you're really going to feed this pigeon to your Falcons? Like, and now 
I will say this, and I hate to admit this, because then Mike does say later on, he's like, nah, man, I wouldn't do that. I was just talking. I'm just talking. Like, he says it later. I'm like, oh, I wish I wish that wasn't there because I wish it was ice cold. But still, the fact that that immediate – I don't know. I just felt like there's something different in Mike Tyson's mentality and his persona. He's not letting all the fame and all that – because he's been more famous than Jay. He's been more famous than anybody on the planet. None of this stuff is new to him. With Tyron Woodley or Ben Askren or these other guys thrown into the spotlight, that was the biggest spotlight they'd ever been under. But now Mike Tyson is like, this is nothing. He's he's done way bigger things. So I don't know. I think this in combination with the remnant strength that he has with all the knowledge he has in his mind, plus the strongest, craziest, like battle-tested mentality on the planet, I think Mike's going to do it. Well, I'll tell you what. Mike, as I looked at the betting odds just yesterday, and Mike is more – from my – when I fought – what's his name? Uh, my UFC debut, I was like a plus 320 dog. And I knocked him out in 40 seconds. Mike is is a less of a dog than I was. He's plus 280 right now. So, oh, uh, I mean, maybe the out. odds, the odds, you know, makers maybe know something. Maybe I'll put a little coin on it, guys. And again, I want to reiterate: I'm just giving all hypothetical situations. I'm not saying sure. that this fight that Jake is going to carry him. I'm not saying it. But when you're when you when there's this much money involved, anything is possible, you know. And again, I want Mike to go in there and I want him to win so bad. I'm going to watch this fight on Netflix. It's a free fight on Netflix. Of course, I'm going to watch it. Even this just nostalgia fact of Mike Tyson getting back in the ring. I watched him against Sugar Ray. Like, I, I'm going to, um, man, I want him to win. I want him to win. But you, you know what's ca- it's crazy? When I asked you, I said, what's the only difference? Or where, where does Mike have an advantage in this fight? He's not bigger. He's not, you know, he's, he doesn't have youth. He, uh, you know, but he has the mentality. He's a natural born killer. Yes. And that is a different mentality than 99.9 repeating percent of the entire population. Mike has been through it all. And I mean, I'm really hoping he can show that mentality uh, uh, this weekend and, and knock Jake Paul out. I think he can do it. I think he can do it. And and I, I don't know that interview made me feel confident and I actually w- wouldn't be, I'm, I am a fan of Jake Paul like you. I wouldn't be that upset if Jake Paul won either, I'd like to see Jake Paul do more things. And I think Jake Paul can continue on in the sport just fine and keep doing interesting things. Even if he loses, I think him losing actually would, it would be a fine thing. And if he comes in and he admits defeat and he shows uh, a great, a tremendous amount of respect for Mike Tyson, then carries forward. I know he's going to train with the Olympic team coming up for the uh, next set round of Olympics. He's going to, he's still trying to push really hard to be a boxer. So I don't think this would derail his career, but I think that would be a really cool ending to this whole saga. I can't wait. I hope you guys are excited. I know some people are are being negative Nancy's about this fight, but yo, it's going to be on Netflix. It's going to be a spectacle. There's also a really cool co-main event. So this is one this is that's uh, very exciting. This is, this is great. Two smelly fingers says it's not the size of the dog. It's the size of the fight in the dog. There you go. Exactly 